Hello everyone, I'm Xander and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Aegis Saber Peregrine. So this is a racing variant of the Saber. Um, they've pretty much taken the uh, chassis of the Firebird and used that frame to build their racing variant. And you can see here in the back, like they pretty much just cut out the wing here and made it more uh, aerodynamic, you could say. But um, yeah, it's it's very similar to the Firebird. Um, you could see the LEDs in the back there. That's a nice touch. It looks really cool at nighttime because it lights up. And, you know, not too much change compared to the Firebird. But um, over here on the left wing of the Peregrine, that is a place where you can store your rifle, just like the Firebird. And then going around here, we have storage. Cool stuff. So you can put you can store items in there. And then just like the Firebird, we have our fuel intake under the tail right here. Whenever that comes in game. So that's our fuel intake. And now let's actually go inside the cockpit and check out the interior. So going up here. go okay and then if you notice they kind of have a lime green uh, a lime green theme so all the buttons are all, all the buttons are lime green um, the LED is green I'm just gonna turn this thing on And yeah, it's really, really similar to the Saber Firebird. It has the gold pass, so interior's modern and up to date. We have our buttons on the side there. Um, and then let's look at it from third person. So yeah, we have our LEDs on the wings. That's our main thruster. And we have a writing that says Saber Peregrine just on the midsection there. Nice touch. And if you notice, the windshield is tinted green. So just the default paint um, fits, fits the uh, racing aesthetic, just like the Mirai Pulse too. I noticed the they go, they went green with that one as well. But, um, yeah, that's the, uh, Saber Peregrine. So this thing has two size one shields, uh, two size one power pant plants, and two size one coolers. It has a size one quantum drive, and the max nav speed for the ship goes up to 1448. So it goes pretty fast. I mean, it's it's designed to go pretty much in a straight line, super fast. And, you know, for a long time, I know that the Drake Herald, the uh, data running ship, was like the fastest ship in the verse. But I think this might actually beat it. I have to double check the nav speed for that ship if they changed it. So yeah, I did actually just check it and um, the Drake Herald used to be the fastest ship, but now the Saber Peregrine beats it. Uh, the Saber Peregrine goes up to, again, uh, 1448 MS nav speed, and I believe the Drake Herald goes up to 1400. So it just beats it by, uh, you know, 50 pretty much, 50 MS. So now I'm just gonna demonstrate to you guys um, how fast it flies in Atmo from zero to whatever speed and then in space in orbit out in outer space we're going to go from zero to max nav speed and then i'll show you guys how um feasible it is 
in, let's say, a racetrack like in the garden on Daymar. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's check it out. All right, guys, so I'm in nav mode. You can see my nav speed on the left there on my HUD. So let's see how fast I go in Atmo from zero to whatever max speed. Set my speed limiter. And this is all using Afterburner as well. So we're going to see how fast it goes boosting. So three, two, one. Oh, it's almost hitting 400. 390. 393 in Atmo. So that's our speed, and that's pretty that's pretty fast in Atmo, honestly. Yeah, look at that. See the LED lights. I don't even have my um landing gear up. Jeez, I don't know if that uh, may have hindered my speed. We're just going to try that again because I'm curious if the landing gear would hinder the speed. Just waiting for my boost to go back up. Okay, so let's see. That should be enough boost. Alright, here I go, guys. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. The landing gear. Uh. Well, I guess it was 390, right? Okay, 390, 392. Yeah, it's 393. It's 393, so... It goes up to 393 in Atmo, so that was a pretty decent test there. And again, you see the LED lights at night. I think it looks really cool. I like the green, the neon green. So now we're going to try this out, out in space. Okay guys, so now we're out in space. We're in the orbit of Daymar. Out in space, so let's see how fast this goes from 0 to... What was it, 1440 the nav speed was, the maxed, max speed? So here we go. 3, 2, 1. Holy cow that is fast 1447 that was just in under a couple seconds that's crazy 1448 that's the max speed that was like under five seconds i think that was pretty wild let's try it out again one more time All right, guys, we're going to try this one more time and demonstrate it. So with Afterburner, we're going to see how fast it goes again in nav speed. So again, three, two, one, go. Yeah, that's like under, under eight seconds, I'd say. So that's pretty, it's pretty fast, honestly. That is fast. Definitely zip by with this thing. Nice shot of Crusader there. And yeah, I, I mean, to me, it seems like this ship is designed to go uh, in a straight line, super fast. Um... Now we're going to see how it fares in a race course on the ground, which I don't think is the greatest ship to be doing that. You need a smaller chassis, maybe like a, Fu a Mirai Fury or something like that. Because uh, this ship is more designed to fly and race um, like out in the Atmo, not in a race course, I think, especially one that zigzag zigzags a lot. But anyways, I'm going to go over to the garden and I'll just demonstrate how it maneuvers in a race course like that for you guys. All right, guys, so we've made it out to the garden on Daymar. I'm not too happy that it's uh, dark out. I kind of wish there was more lighting, but um, I mean, it is what it is. We're just going to truck through. 
But like you could see, the this ship is not... I don't think it's designed to be raced on a race course such as this, especially really tight corners where you turn. Um, to me, a ship like this is designed to fly out in Atmo, maybe through rings through like the racing rings like in arena commander but um anyways i'm going to try my best to navigate through this but yeah you can see it's really dangerous i mean no there is no way yeah and um yeah clearly you could see like oh I'm gonna love tap that. There you go. <laughs> so that proves my point. Um, the ship is way, it's way too big for a racing course like that. But uh, anyways, I'm glad I was able to demonstrate that to you guys. Okay guys, so now we are on the Saber Peregrine website, the promotion material. And yeah, you could see the marketing there. It, see it flying above Hurston going super fast in a straight line it's funny how they you know show it flying around Hurston and I'm pretty sure there's boundaries like in, in the past you'd, you'd blow up trying to fly near the uh, Hurston business district but um, yeah that's some um, you could say misleading marketing but you know it is what it is but I mean that those shots look super cool yeah, it's just emphasis on it going super fast in a straight line. So going down, it says, uh, Saber, blink, and you've missed it. The fastest Saber model ever conceived, the Peregrine takes the infamous military-born Saber chassis and tunes it for an unadulterated speed. The already streamlined frame is propelled by bespoke thrusters and carefully optimized engines that elevate the peregrine straightaway speed to a whole different league so again just super fast in a straight line uh the fastest saber yet already known for its lightweight aerodynamic build and powerful propulsion the peregrine pushes the saber straight sabers straightaway speed into a do totally different league you can see it right there three Paragon pilots in that shot. Uh, and then it says, legendary toughness, what the Peregrine lacks in traditional firepower, it more than makes up for its stout armored frame. What's more, it remains hard to kill without sacrificing any speed. And now that's a really cool shot, of the Saber Peregrine above Thorville. And here we go, that's a rotating shot of it. And we have the technical specs, which we've already um, shown. This is, oh, I see. This is the brochure for it. Very cool. And then those are the different paints. So we have the Saber Peregrine Firebreak. So it's a red and black stripes with white. So that's very racing themed. Then we have the Saber Peregrine Harvest, so it's an orange, uh, black, and white stripes, another cool racing uh, paint. And then we have our Concierge paint, which is the Peregrine Starlight, and that is all black with a bit of white stripes, it looks like. It looks like a little bit of gold on the tail there. It's very Concierge. Um, it's a very Concierge looking paint, for sure. Uh, and then we could see it in a different light here. So that's factory standard, vintage ages. And again, the neon theme going on there. And then here we have the harvest in that light. So harvest black and orange. Then we have the fire break black and red. And lastly, we have the starlight black and chrome. And this looks really cool. And I was kind of hoping like he, if you notice that the windshield is tinted green here and it doesn't really show um, any changes to the windshield, it would be kind of cool if it was tinted orange to reflect the paint's uh, color and theme. Same here, like a red windshield would be kind of cool. 
But uh, yeah, those are the paints for the starlight and going down. So Saber Peregrine, catch it if you can. And we're going down to our prices. And it is going for 170 War Bond. For Concierge, you get the Starlight Paint. And it comes with LTI. Oh, and interesting, it has its own Saber Peregrine serial number. So I know uh, some of the ships in the past had uh, serial numbers. CIG's been kind of on and off with it. Um, but it looks like this one has a serial number. And uh, so we have the Saber Orban, just for everyone that's without the concierge paint, and that is with lifetime insurance with the serial number. Uh, and then it is 185 store credit with six months insurance. Let's see if there's anything else. So those are standalone. Oh, then they have a Saber Collection Plus pack. So that is for 620. So it comes with Saber, the Saber Comet, Saber Firebird, Saber, Saber Peregrine. Um, personally, I wouldn't get this pack. I would just, if you were interested in this ship, I would just go for the Saber, but that's just me. And then they have the pack um, without the concierge paint. And then it's 685 store credit. That's uh, six months insurance. And then here are our prices for the paints. So it's fourteen forty US for the three paints, and there's a two paint pack with the orange and red, and it is six US for the starlight paint, and six dollars for each paint for the other ones. Interesting. And then you can upgrade it. So I, uh, let's see if there is a. Um, difference I just want to see if I were to upgrade my C8R uh, okay so if you were to um, war bot uh, use new money like fresh cash you do get a, a little bit of a discount but if I were you um, so the Sabre is what if we said it's 170 so if you can get a ship value up to 160 maybe or somewhere around there and then just store credit it. You could save a little bit of money there and just spend $10 new money. But um, yeah, that's the promotional uh, material for the Saber Peregrine. So who do I think this ship is for? I think this is for the dedicated racer because this is a really niche ship. Racing ships are really niche in general. I mean, I don't think it's as popular as combat ships or um, different uh, professions in the verse. Um, I know the racing community is very small at the moment, but it is growing. And I'd imagine it's for the person who participates <laughs> in like the Daymar Rally or the Murray Cup and who's part of a racing org. And yeah, just likes racing in general. I mean, you know, I, I still think we need server meshing to increase the player count to have a higher uh, player population so racing communities can grow and like it's an actual thing you know I, I'd like to think about it being like fast and furious you know when there's a crowd and like people are gathering to race so you know maybe one day racing is going to get popular in Star Citizen but as for the Peregrine I also think it's it, it could be for the the uh, ship collector, you know, those people who are part of Concierge and collect ships. This is this is a nice, this is a sweet ship to own for sure. Like I, I think it's really, I think it's really badass. I like the the green uh, neon theme on it, and yeah, I mean, I think it's a great ship to own. But um, it is incredibly niche, and you know, for the price, one seventy bones. I mean. Man, you can get a Zeus. You can get a Zeus CL, the cargo variant, or a Zeus Exploration, and you have way more versatility. So I'm just going to nail that down. It is a really nice ship. But guys, that is our Saber Peregrine video. Thanks very much for checking out the video, guys. Uh, make sure to leave a comment if you're going to pick it up. If you've already got it and you're enjoying it, let me know. 
And uh, if you enjoyed the video, guys, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.